What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 21 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that we're just trying to figure out which of our answer choices represents the line that is perpendicular to the graph of this linear equation and passes through this point. Now in order to do a question like this well, we'll need to know how to find slope from a linear equation in standard form. Uh, what it means for slopes to be perpendicular and the math behind that. And there's going to be one step near the end where it will be good for us to test an ordered pair as a solution to one of these equations. So test an x and y number as a solution. All right, so let's go ahead and start by talking about how to actually get slope from standard form. Now, if you remember, if we can get our linear equation to look like this, Whatever number is our x coefficient is going to tell us our slope. So let's go ahead and figure that out with this linear equation, how to get it into this form. If I start with 4x plus 3y equals 9, I want to get y by itself. That's my goal. So I'm going to start by getting rid of everything around it and treating this like a two-step equation. So I see a positive 4x. I get rid of it. These cancel, and I'm left with 3y equals negative 4x plus 9. I divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 cancels, and I'm left with y equals negative 4 thirds, because I have to divide 3, or negative 4 by 3, x plus 3, because I also have to apply this divided by 3 to my constant here. So I have y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 3. So now, what on earth does it mean for two slopes to be parallel? Because I'm sure you remember from geometry that parallel lines mean they make right angles. Of course, that's very poorly drawn, but I think you get my meaning. With perpendicular slopes, essentially, If I want to find that two lines have perpendicular slopes, I need to take one fraction, flip it over, and change the sign. So three halves, I flip over to be two thirds, and I make it negative, so these are perpendicular. If I wanted to go the other way, I would take negative two thirds, flip it to make negative three halves, and change it from negative to positive, so I get right back here. Um, I could also do, as an example of one with a whole number, a slope of negative 2. If I, f if I pretend that's a fraction, I could pretend it's negative 2 ones, flip it over to get negative 1 half, and then I take out this negative sign and make it positive. So perpendicular slopes, they have to look like fractions that, are, that, that were flipped over, and then one's negative and one's positive. So let me demonstrate exactly how this looks. All right, so I have this point right here. If I want to uh, go from here and have a slope of negative 2, that gets me down to right 1, so that puts me right here. And here's that line. Now, a slope of 1 half, right 2 and up 1, would put me in this direction. And I'm sure you can see despite how poorly I've drawn this, these slopes actually look like they make a right angle. So negative 2 and positive 1 half are negative reciprocals. They're fractions that have been flipped over and the sign on one has been changed to get to negative or positive from the other. Um, and they make perpendicular lines if I graph two lines with that slope actually on there. So at this point, I need to actually test out each of these, and I can actually see that choice A and choice C have the same x and y coefficients, and then choice B and choice D have the same x and y coefficients. So I'm just going to have to test choice A and choice B, see which one gets me the slope that I'm looking for if I'm looking for perpendicular slopes. So let's erase some of this.
Okay, so if I'm testing choice A, I start with 3x minus 4y equals, ne equals something. I'll use negative 18 in this case. All right, so I want to get y by itself. I'll remind myself that this is positive 3x and subtract 3x gets me negative 4y equals negative 18 minus 3x. And now I divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, and I end up at y, because negative 4 divided by negative 4 cancels, equals negative 3 divided by negative 4, I can just call 3 fourths x, plus 4 and a half, because that's what 18 divided by 4 gets us. Now let's compare this slope with the slope of my original function. This slope was negative 4 thirds, this is 3 fourths. What I'm looking for is for these two fractions to look like they are flipped over and negative copies of each other. So if I take 4 thirds and flip it over, it becomes 3 fourths. Take, it neg or take a negative and make it positive, and that's what I'm looking for. I take 3 fourths and flip it over to get 4 thirds. It was positive, I make it negative, and that's what I'm looking for. So I know that because choice A got me a perpendicular slope, that B and D are out. It has to be either A or C. So now the last question is, which is it? Is it 3x minus 4y equals negative 18? Or is it 3x minus 4y equals negative 6? And it's at this point that we actually need to go back to this ordered pair that the problem gave us, x of negative 2, y of 3. And I'm actually going to use that last skill that I said we would be using in this problem and test that ordered pair by plugging it in for x and y in either of the functions. And since the left side of this looks the same, I'm just going to go ahead and see what it equals. So 3 times x, this would be 3 times negative 2 minus... 4y, 4 times 3. 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. 4 times 3 gives me 12. So negative 6 minus 12. If I use my integer rules, I can think of this like I owe someone $6 and I borrow $12. So the amount of money I owe them is going up to $18, but that's still money I owe them because I was already owing them money and I borrowed more. So this gets me negative 18, so I'm looking for the answer choice that says 3x minus 4y equals negative 18, and that's choice A. That was a lot of work for one question.